just realised it's St. Patrick's Day. Mm. Normally by this point we'd be in the pub, so that's probably why we didn't know that it was. <laughs> that's a shame, isn't it? It's a big shame. Uh, are you are you any Irish at all? Because you I only drink eighth. Guinness today if you're if you're a bit Irish. I can have an eighth of a pint of Guinness and oh. then just discard the rest. <laughs> just Absolutely. throw it down the throw it in the bin. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll have a seventeenth. I'm gonna assume I'm a seventeenth of Irish. <laughs> no. I've had that much Guinness. I've got no evidence of this, but we'll take it, because why not? If it's on the internet, it must be true. Mm. Here is your wrestling news. We have shocking details of a top Raw star's recent injury. A top Impact star's contract is expiring soon. And some scrapped past Undertaker WrestleMania plans have been revealed. Find out who was lined up to face the dead man in a little bit. So Asuka returned to Monday Night Raw this past week following having her teeth quite literally kicked out by Shayna Baszler. And we thought that... Asuka may be on the shelf for quite some time. Very surprised to see her back. Always good to see her back. But it's not the end of her injury woes, is it, Jack? No, uh, she was uh, basically issuing a post-Raw message to her fans on the Now Voice app, which is a Japanese social network platform, uh, and revealed that the teeth she has in are now temporary, and that apparently it'll take six months for the injury to, to properly heal. And that in that time, she's going to have implants in her mouth, to replace the teeth that were injured by Shayna a few weeks ago. Sounds nasty. Sounds pretty nasty. Yeah, it just so this is the beginning of like six months of, of rehab for this injury, and she's gonna work all the way through it. And and a fair play, you you wanna crack on, you wanna get on and do it. I'd be very cautious. Especially with any injury around the jaw and around mm. the mouth. We've just seen uh, Finn Balor in a, in a, with an injury in a similar facial area, uh, having his jaw pretty much wired back in place and returning to action at a fairly decent pace. But there is always that concern when it's anything around the, the jaws and the teeth. I had a chat a while ago with uh, NXT UK star Primate. Mm. And, and he was telling me, because he had an issue with, with his jaw, uh, and and it's in the same area as the teeth, so that's why I'm bringing it up. But he said there is like um an like an anxiety that sets in when you're starting to train again. It's an area that's so sensitive; it almost gets it's going to get re injured. Mm. And he said he was in training; he was adamant that he wanted to take as many lariats and such as possible. <sighs> Just to try and shake off the fear. Because yeah. you, when you're a professional, you know that you'll take the move and it'll be fine. But it's shaking off that fear and just being able to throw yourself back into it again. I'd be curious to know whether Asuka has had anything like that with these temporary teeth in her mouth for the next six months. Whether she's gonna, whether it's going to cause her any sort of mental blocking as well. Yeah, hopefully she'll be all right. The positive thing, I suppose, is that Asuka's really hard. So... <laughs> yes! Re- wrestlers so, tend to wrestlers tend to be so yeah i noticed there was a there's a real and a few other people have said this and we mentioned it in graded as well like there's almost like an nxt oscar energy about her from monday like it felt mm. like the old oscar from from back in the day and i was delighted to see it because when when she's let loose she is the best on the planet but yeah. they, she kind of fell into this sort of comedy role a little bit and sort of got lost in a in a shuffle during and i'm excited for her to get to a point where she brings that old mean streak properly back yeah wow. me too i'm just laughing because when you said the old asker you sounded like vince trying to bring back the old stone cold <laughs> oh the old yeah. stone cold <laughs> yeah. that's what i was sort of channeling there <laughs> asker runs out and stunners everyone in wcw <laughs> what a time to be alive uh don't be heading over to impact wrestling they had a show last night it was a, a decent show from impact they do have this wonderful consistency on a tuesday night and i'm a big fan of what they're doing one of those that has stood out over the past year or so has been Jordan Grace. Yes. And Jordan Grace, former Knockouts champion, uh, almost an X-Division champion, had there not been some shenanigans last year around that. But Jordan Grace has been talking to Wrestling Perspective Podcast and let us know a little bit about her future. Yeah, she explained that basically her contract with Impact is set to expire in May. She said, honestly, I have no idea what's going to happen when my contract is up. Uh, I can't foresee the future and who knows who's going to offer me something or if I'm going to stay here. I truly have no idea and that's why wrestling isn't the best career path for some people because it's not very stable. WWE was and still is my childhood dream forever but that was the only option back when I was growing up. Now it's just like there are so many doors you can go through and they're all like in front of you at the same time. Um, 
that's a very fair point from Jordan Grace. And I think also she's the sort of wrestler who I reckon will get multiple offers. I think she just will. Yeah, I'd love to see her as part of the mix in WWE. I think she's a, a real force of nature in wrestling. Mm-hmm. And and, and it, we, it would be a big loss to Impact if they let her go. I mean, it was something similar this time last year. I think we were talking about Moose with the contract coming to an end. He's another guy that would no doubt have other offers coming his way as well. And, and he ended up re-signing with Impact Wrestling. Uh, Jordan's been telling some great stories within Impact. She's been teaming with Jazz lately, kind of getting Jazz out of retirement to stand by her side. But I would wonder whether... Jordan Grace has been there for so long now and done so much. Whether she would want to pursue other other climbs, I guess we're going to find out very soon. Um, with when it comes to Jordan Grace, where would you like to see her fall? If it was if it was going to be the AEW or a WWE brand, let's book this. Where would you like to see her fall potentially? Oh, it's a really tricky one because I think she'd fit in fantastically in both places. I guess. Oh man, that's tricky. I'll go SmackDown. I nice. reckon. I don't know why. I just reckon. I reckon her chucking Sasha Banks around. I reckon she could have a great match with Bianca Belair. I think that's Smack, yeah, SmackDown. There we go. I've done it. Uh- <laughs> that's what you should do it. Jordan go to Smackdown that's what you want Jack said it and it must <laughs> be the case uh, this Sunday the NWA back on pay-per-view we've been talking throughout the week about uh, the matches being announced for back for the attack which feels like a return to form for NWA power uh, another match added last night so we've now got the NWA World's Heavyweight title match between Nick Aldis and uh, Aaron Stevens we've got a number one contenders match for the Women's World Championship uh, Camille taking on Thunder Rosa uh, and we now have a TV an NWA TV title match don't we? We do it features the Pope uh, also known as Elijah Burke in WWE also known as D'Angelo De Niro in TNA or in Impact uh, and he's going to be defending the NWA television title against Thomas Latimer or Bram on the uh, on the return pay-per-view uh, I'm, I'm a, this sounds weird right? I don't know if I've mentioned this before I was a huge fan of the Pope in TNA, mm. a huge. It was so good. So I feel like good. it was a real missed opportunity. For oh, hundred percent for the Pope. That he felt like at points when, when like the Hogan era was all around in, in TNA. Like Pope was this this guy that that had a, a little something in WWE, but never quite enough. Yeah, and was really growing as mm. as like a talent and. And then he just stopped. I, I've done a. I recently did one of Justin Henry's marvelous scripts. Recently, uh, I recorded it yesterday, and that is on a similar story, not with uh, the Pope, but with another figure in TNA history who was just this incredible talent who was a bit wasted. So look yeah. out for that one in the near future, everybody. I won't reveal who it is, but. It's it's a similar kind of story. Ah, so Pope uh, doing some great stuff in TNA, getting a little nod there. He mm-hmm. uh, he won the TV title for the NWA back in October. This is when um, NWA were doing stuff on primetime live from UWN. They had a whole series of title matches with NWA belts on the line, and that was where he picked it up there. So uh, also, we're going to end on some stuff that that comes from the the mouth and the mind of De Pope. He was on Lucha Libre Online's Behind the Curtain podcast, and he revealed a surprise surprising name that was set to clash with the undertaker back at wrestlemania 23 who would that be jack not that much of a surprise sylvester turkai we all knew it was going to happen at some point (laughs) obviously Uh, mate when we when we write the book it'll be where was turkai and taker no this does seem to have actually been a plan in all seriousness um according to obviously uh, Elijah Burke or the Pope uh, saying that WrestleMania 23 the whole plan was for Turkai and Taker and the Pope was the was supposed to obviously ride the coattails of Sylvester Turkai. I had no problem with that at all. They brought Turkai in from OVW specifically because Undertaker was and still is a huge MMA guy. Undertaker loved the physicality and the legitness of the MMA. He wanted to bring that type of uh, wherewithal and create the same type of magic inside the wrestling ring. Had it been Turkai versus Undertaker, I wouldn't have minded taking a big boot off the apron or a choke slam because what I remember about that event is 80,000 fans. And up until that point, it was the second largest crowd behind only WrestleMania 3. Obviously, that's been eclipsed since then, but I do understand Burke's point. That would have been an incredible moment, even if it is just getting just smacked by The Undertaker in front of tens of thousands of people. 
Sadly, Turkai never really became much within WWE. There was there was high hopes for him. I seem to remember that he was connected to the WWE in some way, shape, or form, like in the late nineties. Mm. Like he's he's a guy they had their eye on for the longest of time, and then it kind of felt like he was on TV for a hot minute, and they went nah. Yeah. After all that, you know, it's like it's like mulling over, like walking around a video game shop and and mulling over whether or not you buy Cyberpunk. And <laughs> after about an hour going, yeah, all right. And then playing it for 20 minutes and going, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sure it's a good game. They talk about it a lot on Triple Jump. Uh, Elijah Burke also revealed in this interview, and I want to chuck this in. I quite, this was a, this was news to me, at least, and it may be news to you. Vince McMahon, was offered a, Vince McMahon offered Elijah Burke a spot in the original version of the Spirit Squad. Elijah in the Spirit Squad, apparently. <laughs> Uh, and, Berkey. Uh, Ber- Ber- Berkey. I, why did I go for the less obvious one? Nice one, Jack. Uh, Berkey turned it down, and this got him a little bit of heat backstage because a lot of people saw him as snubbing an opportunity that many other people I mean, would have grabbed with both hands. I mean, if that is true, then I'm I'm fully on his side. Um, if you look at the Spirit Squad, right, a lot of talented names in there, but only one of them has stuck around, and that's Dolph Ziggler, of course. And I don't think that's particularly because of what he did in the Spirit Squad. I think that's because of he wasn't even the main guy in the Spirit Squad. That was that was Kenny. So I think that Omega. So I think no, <laughs> Kenny Kenny Dykstra. Um, so no, I think no. That, let's start that rumor that it was Kenny Omega in the Spirit <laughs> Kenny Squad. Kenny Omega was in the Spirit Squad. They're all jumping around and he's like, <laughs> it's just totally different. Um, but no, I think that Ziggler emerged because of what he did afterwards um, and proved himself in like any situation. So I don't blame Elijah Burke at all for not wanting to be in the Spirit Squad, uh, and I think that had he been, I don't, I don't particularly think that might have led to a sustained WWE run for him. Um, I still think he was closer to stardom in in TNA and doing what he did. And I hope he does a uh, right first. I hope he retains that belt, Tom, and I yes. hope he goes on a, on a tear in the NWA. NWA back for the attack on Fight TV, a part of the Virgin Media app here in the UK, Virgin Media package here in the UK Mm -hmm. and on the app everywhere else around the world as well. Stay safe. Love you, Turkai.